Hello to all my creative friends. That's right, I'm calling you creative because that's exactly what you are. You are creative because you were created by the Creator, by God. A lot of times when we hear the word creative or creativity, we think of things like painting or singing or writing, and those things are good ways to measure creativity, but really creativity is imagining what you can do because you were created in God's image. So every single one of us, every single one of us has the ability to be creative and to be a creator. And that's exactly what we're talking about this month. We're talking about creation, the creation story that we find in the Bible and the creation story that we find in us as we are creators who were created in the image of God. So the Bible tells us exactly what we need to know, all the details about the creation story. And if you watched the video last week, you had an assignment and your assignment was to read the creation story. If you haven't had a chance to do that yet, don't worry, there's still time. Find a Bible and go to the very beginning. The very beginning of your Bible is the book of Genesis. And that, at the very beginning of the book of Genesis, is where you will find the creation story. So I want you to do that. If you need to pause this video right now and go find a Bible and read the creation story, you can do that. And guess what? I'll be right here when you come back. You just unpause the video. One of the things that I love about the Bible is that it gives us all kinds of great details about how and why God did things. And it's up to us to notice those details. I have a detail that I've noticed about the creation story, and I want to share that with you today. So here we go. Look at this. This is what I like to call the creation arch. If you look at it, it looks like a blank rainbow. But if you look down here along the bottom, you will see all the different days of creation. The Bible tells us that it took God six days to create everything in the world. And I want to break that down and look at that together. Now let me show you something really cool. God had a plan for his creation. He didn't just start throwing all of the things out there. Now I believe that he had the power that he could have done that. He could have... and all of the things would have just been automatically created, but he had a system. He followed a plan, and that plan makes sense when you look at it like this. Here is the next part of our creation arch. This shows us, again, what God created on each day. But I want you to notice something. God spent day one, day two, and day three preparing his creation. He did everything in those days to get it ready for the next part of his creation, which was the decorate. So look over there on the, on the right hand side where it says decorate. Do you notice that those days are empty? They have the same things about them that the first three days have. They haven't been decorated yet, but everything is there so that, they, so that God's decorations will be able to live and thrive. So he spent day one, day two, and day three preparing his creation. And then he spent the last three days filling his creation. Take a look at this. Here we see that what God did in day one by separating the light and the dark well, then if you go over to day four, you can see that he used the space and he decorated it. He decorated the dark with the moon and the stars and he decorated the light with sun. And if you go to day two and you see that God created water and sky and he separated those spaces, well then follow your creation arch over to day five and you'll see that on those days, God decorated his creation. He filled the water with fish and he filled the sky with birds. 
Okay, now go to day three. Look at day three down there at the bottom. You see that God created land and plants that day. And then if you move over to day six, God filled day six. He decorated his creation with animals and human. But guess what? All of the things on day four, day five, and day six, none of those things could have existed if he hadn't first created the things from day one, day two, and day three. That's why it's so important that we read and know the order that God created these things. He had a purpose. He did it on purpose because he knew if I create animals and I create humans, but I haven't yet created land and trees, they're not going to have any way to eat. If I create fish, but I haven't given them a place to live yet, how will they exist? So all of this is on purpose. I love to think back on this creation arch when I think about the days of creation because I remember that God spent those first three days preparing his creations and then he spent the last three days decorating them. Last week, I told you about an idea that I had, a creation innovation family challenge. And I wanted you to go on a nature walk and just kind of start exploring nature that you see all around you and think about something that your family can create. So today I want to give you a little bit more information about how that creation innovation is going to work. Go on a nature walk, draw some inspiration from the creations around you. I also told you, you were going to use things that you had in your house. So gather some supplies. It can be things that you already have, like maybe Play-Doh or fabric or markers and crayons. It could be an old cookie sheet that you want to decorate. I don't care. However you want to do it is great with me. I wanted you to get some inspiration from that nature walk, and I wanted you to gather some supplies from around your house, and now it's time to create. I want your family to create a very unique creation, and I want it to be a creature. A creature creation okay and I'm gonna send your parents some information about all the things that you're you're gonna need to know about your creature so we know that when God created his creations he took a lot of time and he answered a lot of questions and he thought about each one of those creations because they were all important to him and I want you to do the same thing. So I'm gonna send you some questions that you have to answer about your creation and I want you to spend some time really thinking about these creatures and think about what your creature is gonna look like. And then I'm gonna send you these questions and you're gonna to have to answer all these questions about your creature. And a lot of work to answer these questions about these creatures. I just got to say like God really put in the work when he did all of this creation because he answered all of these questions before he created everything. But everything he created has a purpose. That's what I want us to do. I want us to spend the rest of this month being creative, creating our special family creature. Gather those supplies, put it together, use your imagination, and get ready because I want you to be so proud of your creature that you want to show it off to us. I told you last week that at the end of the month of August, we're going to have a family event here in the church parking lot. We're going to be safe and socially distanced, but we want, but we want to give you a chance to come and be together and show off your creatures. So get ready because I am sure that we are going to see some awesome things when we gather together. I'll see you next week for more on creation. This is the, probably the closest that you've been to someone, isn't it? Don't panic. I bet it is. I don't have on a mask. Don't panic because I'm the only one in this room and I'm talking to this camera. But now let me show you something really cool. Do you want to see me?